button. Thank you very much. Got it. Funny, I think about it and then I don't think about it. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. So um, welcome. I want to know how, how is it going for you guys? We, we're on chapter six, gliding along. We're actually getting into some real meat coming up right away. So we want to make sure that you guys really are grokking this stuff, you know, not just like on a mind level, though many of us in this group have studied it many times. And even though we just were talking, it sometimes feels like up here. But Yolanda had a good point, you know, until life gives us a, an opportunity to live it and, and to practice it, to dive into it, um, you know, we don't really get a chance to, it, it's just, you know, philosophy. So um, I would love to hear who has shares, who has, you know, any wins, insights, or uh, learnings about what we've um, had going so far. I see that everybody, firstly, is not new. Everybody has been here, and it's nice to see everybody's familiar faces again. But so who, who would like to share how the study of this, um, this book, Reality Transurfing, is going for them so far and share maybe a, um, how they're applying? Da, 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 da. Oh, Carrie, Carrie, unmute yourself. Let me see if I can help you. I can ask you to unmute. I'm not sure why it's, there you go. There you go, should be unmuted. Hey there guys. You go. Um, I read this chapter back in July and I was hoping to reread it these two, uh, these two weeks. But since I've been reading this book, things are coming towards me so beautifully that I'm getting caught up in other wonderful synchronicities. So uh, I've been not sure what to do with part of my business and bang, this fantastic course presented itself and I've been busy working with that. I've got a personal trainer at the moment, so that's going fantastically. I wake up with a smile nearly every day. It just feels like things, I think one, you said it a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was four weeks ago that things would just continue to improve. I still haven't solved that horrible problem next door yet, but <laughs> I obviously still have lots more growth to go there, but, <laughs> but everything else is just so smoothly working along so beautifully. So I, I, I do have it and I, did, I was reading it last night. I just haven't done the reread like I'd intended, but in, it's for good reasons, if that makes sense. Well, awesome. Thank you so much. And you know what? Um, we don't always, we're not always getting what we want all the time. <laughs> so thanks for bringing that part up. The reality is, you know, how can we, how can we be um, gliding into what we, what we want and still, you know, take the blows along the way. It's part of it. it and just, still smile, right? We still get, not just because it annoys him, but because I want to. <laughs> That's right. Who else? Who else? Welcome, um, Shantae, right? Welcome. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I, I'm just asking if, um, if folks have a share or maybe a win insight or learning around uh, the six chapters that we've, um, that we've been into so far. If you have something to share or maybe a practical example of how uh, you've noticed perhaps a space of variation, you know, how you're like, it's, it's rough and then it's, it's, you're moving into something better like Carrie was just saying, or, um, you know, how a pendulum perhaps, you know, you might be yeah. seeing that you might be seeing them, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that something is changing, but you're actually seeing them and being able to go, oh, look at how my emotions just got me there. Um, but any examples, maybe of a, a balancing force, uh, balancing force, you know, how uh, we want something really, really, really bad. And, and it's like whatever we really wanted is now really far away. So um, who has something to share? inquiring minds want to know <laughs> if not I have another idea Mary's here hello Mary welcome tonight welcome. or today where are you coming from I, I I've seen your face before a few times uh San Diego area San Diego welcome San Diego. do you have an application share for us about the six chapters so far um not off the top of my head no <clears throat> Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put us into a dyad. And um, this way we can prime out what, um, you know, what's really uh, the juices here. And, and um, so, so maybe write down 
jot down the the different chapters. So you know we've got space of variations or the concept, which which basically you know is like that we're there are so many different um, possibilities that are actually pr happening simultaneously, and it's really how we're um, thinking, how, who we're being in each moment that brings us into having that reality, living that reality. We've got pendulums, we've got balancing forces, as I was just saying. Um, what other ones? Um, just want you guys to be primed before we go into the diet uh wave of fortune right like did you did you have something really great that happened and how did you stay on that wave of fortune um and that's probably good for primes but so a dyad basically i'm going to put you guys into a group uh one-on-one -on -one. um you're going to go right into it and for five minutes you're going to say um tell me a win insight or learning that you've had and i want you to dive into those pieces that I just shared, those, those concepts in, into yourself and whatever wants to come up, whatever wants to be shared about that. So that when we get back here and we're all together as a group, we can answer those questions and, and really get you prepared and primed to move into what's coming next in the book that's really getting juicy. Okay, you guys ready? You know what a diet is? It's a reminder. Yeah, thank you. Everybody. So, so um, essentially you are asking the instruct, uh, giving the instruction, the person receives the instruction and then they speak until they're finished. The person that is the, the listener, they say thank you. That's all they say. They don't interrupt, they don't coach, they don't try to get more information. And it's really about listening and about really expressing, full expression and full listening. And when the diet is complete, the diet is complete. We bow out and whatever happened in that communication is, is complete. <clears throat> And so it's a really beautiful process that goes deep. So we're gonna go five minutes, win insight or learning on what we've been studying so far. Hi, Karina. Um, I'll, I'll come into your room, okay, once we get going here and, and answer any questions that you have, but we'll get started, okay? So I'm gonna get these rooms going here. So it'll just take me a second to set this up. Thank you, Teresa. Does well, anybody uh, have any questions before we run into the uh, the dyad rooms? Yeah, any thank questions? you, Cindy. No questions. Okay, great. Okay. So we'll take a deep breath in. Let's ground ourselves. They just have a crazy. You're going to be asked to join the breakout room, push the button to accept. And then you're going to be told that the breakout room is closing in one minute and then you'll um, be able to go there. Okay, I think that you're all assigned. Beautiful. Awesome. Popping, popping. unassigned for oh okay i see i see oh man you know when you don't do this in advance it gets confusing it's tech it's just tech <laughs> it's just tech Break oh, there we go um oh, the importance. oh that's not what i wanted to do oh my gosh now it's telling everybody they have one minute to come back <laughs> It's a fun technique. Right. Okay, you know what we're going to do? I want you to tell me a win, insight, or learning that you guys have had and share with each other really quick. Hudson. You're muted, love. Sorry. Um, this is a totally different vocabulary, but I really believe my win is, is that um, my spiritual path has led me onto uh, a lifeline. Um, and um, yeah, so it's a big affirmation. 
uh, for me uh, reading through this. And I think for the most part, I understand uh, what he's saying. And so I've been trying to interpret it in my own, my own words. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me, everyone. We're going to go back into that. I, I, I want to apologize. Um, Carrie and Hudson, now you're off to your own room. Okay. And I got kicked out of my room with Mary. Okay. Thank you. We're yeah. going to practice dropping importance. That's one of those moments you just <laughs> laugh, relax, <laughs> let it be. All right. Yeah. Thank you for your. That was a warm up diet. <laughs> Good job. This time. Ooh, good Great. job. Yeah. Did it work? Okay, it worked. Okay, it worked. Okay. So it. now I think I have to make out one more for us so that I can, or do I? Oh, we're good. Could, we're good. You could pause the recording right now and then we'll just. Okay. I'm going to. Welcome back. I would love to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Tell me when insider learning that you've had in these six chapters. Of course, whether you dove deep into it, you just seen on the surface of it, there's stuff that's awakening in you. And who would like to share something that arose in the dyads? Ooh. Yes, Julia. You have to unmute yourself. There you go. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, the, the concept of lowering importance has been kind of on my mind and I feel like I'm turning it over in my head a lot in terms of like, what's like the, I feel like I, I could know like a very disempowering way to do that, but like, what's the empowering way to do that? Like the way that is kind of like the actual transurfing way. So that's cool. And um, I didn't get to read chapter six, but I did read the summary and I'm very excited to hear all about it. So can't wait. Awesome, awesome. So, so what are you doing to lower importance, Julia? That's a great. Uh, yeah, um, I guess like, like for just for example, when I'm checking 538.com and looking at the um, percentage forecast for the presidential election like five times a day, um, sometimes I'll feel that like urgency in my stomach of like, oh, this is really important. Oh my God. So I guess like, like in those moments, especially like, it's kind of like coming back to the present and um, like the space of, I want to say almost like the, what I can control as opposed to what I can't control, but like control even seems a little too um, heavy of a word to use there. Like the, I guess it kind of coming to a place of like breath and remembering like, you know, that there's, I don't know how to phrase it, but a, like, I guess it feels like hope and hope and acceptance and presence. Thank you. Beautiful. Tony, do you have something to share? Was your hand up? Well, no, not necessarily, but I do, do believe that acceptance is a, it's a powerful way of reducing the importance of it so that, it's, you know, if it's not this thing I have to have anymore. Yeah. You said you said you had a few questions on the first few chapters. Do you have, can you voice, can you bring up one of those or a few of those on the first five, six chapters that we review? Yeah, the concept of pendulum is, um, I still don't get it. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not that I don't get it. It's, it's like, I want to relate it to things I know. And to me, it's, it's like, um, like the critical mass of, of society, perhaps, but I, you know, I don't, that's, that's the question I have. Perfect. Thank you. That's what I would like. I really, we reviewed this, what we've done so far is the basics of reality transurfing. Okay which as you guys know, is the way to create life, how to bring dreams into reality, how to create anything with the least effort possible. It's crazier than that, if you wanna, if you wanna see it like this, is how do we bring what we choose, what we have the intention to have, how do we make it appear, literally? Not about working hard for it, but how do we make it happen? Mm -hmm. What we're going through in the first few chapters 
is the basics. So bring out the question. So I love your question, Tony. What is, I don't get this pendulum thing. Or maybe we'll dive a little bit into importance to make sure that all these concepts are really, really clear. So please feel free to bring it up. Let's use this time to, 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 to dive into all these concepts to make sure that, you know, we, we really move solid, you know, on, on, uh, on our skills as we, as we dive through this uh, material. Thank you, Tony. Who else has any sh uh, share question on the first few chapters? Or insights? Mary, let's bring it up. So uh, my insight was um, about how, I, don't know, I forget how they phrase it, but it's about how the mind um, can really only analyze or, you know, figure things out, but really um, to live from the heart. You know, you lead with the heart and then the mind kind of follows. And <clears throat> it's, and they, and they kind of say how, um, oh, I just lost my thought. Um, oh my gosh. Um, let's see. So the heart, um, oh my gosh. I've, I lost it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the heart's more intuitive. Oh, that. The heart's more intuitive and the mind is very logical and figures things out. And so it's um, always harder, I believe, to lead with the heart and tr trust. And they were saying how, you know, you should just let go. And then when the problems come up, it mean like the solution may not look like your mind would work it out as to be. And so it may be like, you know, you got to think out of the box and it, and so it's even harder because you just have to trust and go, oh, is this the way? And, and kind of just really get quiet and listen to your heart. So. Thank you. Yeah, we'll dive into that today. That's the core, of, that's the core lesson today. Beautiful. Oh, Shante, any questions, any insights on the first five, six chapters we've read? Um, I don't have any questions. I am, I just, uh, I'm late to the party, so I've read, um, I'm reading kind of backwards. I read um, chapter five, and I'm in the middle of chapter four. I didn't realize we were already on chapter six, but my insight, um, I guess the biggest insight, uh, which I shared with Mary, uh, is that um, it doesn't matter whether it's holding on to your wants or resisting your your non-wants, <laughs> either side um, creates this, this energy, um, I think, I don't know how to, I think they forget what they call it, it's kind of like <sighs> excess energy, I guess, is um, what I'm getting that doesn't really serve, and I kind of get the sense of the, the balance um, that is called for in surfing and I, of course it's trans surfing so the image that i get is of you know someone riding a, a wave you know surfing and riding a wave and being in that space where they're just really dropped in and just riding the wave and and that's all there is and there's a sense of clarity and timelessness that i think um this that's the sense that i get this is about the not being on one side or the other side of the pendulum, but really being in this, this space where I think someone earlier said something about taking that breath, that pause, um, that, that spaciousness, that emptiness, that clarity. Um, but I still have a lot more to read. I haven't read chapter one, two, or three, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is perfect. This is perfect. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Please all feel free to just bring it on. Hudson, any shares, questions, um, insights? Um, well, I definitely would have to say that I definitely agree. Um, my life certainly did change when I began having different ideas uh, of developing uh, a higher power that was different than what I grew up to believe in. And um, it, it, it just, it, you know, over time did literally change my life. 
and put me on a lifeline um, that was more peaceful and serene and that I kind of wondered if my high, higher power, I, I think all the, all the pendulums that I had in my life were projections actually of what was going on inside and I was manifesting it on the outside. I think that's one thing, um, how I word it. And then I also believe that those were opportunities that my higher power used um, to um, maybe not so much challenge me, but give me an opportunity to stand up and to become the person that I really wanted to. And like Mary talked about her heart or soul, like really um, giving myself permission, you know, to really get into my heart and to my soul and to um, come from that and not, you know, just my head. I, I kind of have the point of view that you need both. <laughs> Uh, to get a full balance uh, of life. Um, but I really see that, yeah, every, every pendulum really that I've had, person, and mostly personal uh, pendulums that I've allowed myself to become um, attached to was an, was an opportunity uh, for me to really um, develop my, my strategies you know, that, that work for me gave me a lot more compassion and understanding of myself. And then I developed uh, a relationship with a higher power that no matter who I was, you know, it was, I'm okay, that I am enough, that I'm good enough. Um, but I, I've got this potential, this, this unlimited potential you know, that he's talking about in terms of, I believe, you know, lifelines. And that my biggest gift is that I've ever been given is the freedom to choose. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of people, you know, bad mouth free will and whatever, but really, um, it's, I think the most incredible gift that I've been given is to, uh, to make a choice and, and I can choose again. And I can choose again, you know, and I can choose again. Thank you. That was very powerful. Thank you very much, Hudson. Uh, Karina, share a question, insights, yeah, practical I think, applications, anything. Yeah, it's, uh, I haven't read the, a lot of the book, but I've been coming to a few of the meetings. Um, definitely getting the heart space, getting the, the dropping in. I just find the, um, the head comes in and the impatience to where I want to be. So maybe that's the pendulum swing uh, that comes up. And then when that comes up, then the come the emotions. So sitting, I can see both and I can feel both, but I guess it's, it's flowing with that and it's, it's not getting too frustrated with the, or the impatience of not being where what I want to create like instantly <laughs> I can mm. feel it but then the head comes in and does the rest yeah. that's all that's where I'm at with it beautiful thank you thank you Daniela shares questions where are you on the readings hi, hi. Um, so I'm like Karina I haven't had a chance to um, or opportunity to read the book I just started actually tonight so I'm on page 19 um, <laughs> but um, from the last um, zoom meeting that we had I got quite a bit out of that I was sharing a little bit of that with Karina in our diet uh, big thing that came up for me from that exercise that Linda did uh, with us was the forgiveness part and um, <clears throat> just, you know, um, identifying what I guess, you know, what I'm feeling right now in, in this last several months stage of my life, however you want to put it, is, is this feeling of stuckness of having no purpose or, you know, what is my purpose is um, I tend to be a very kind of driven type of person. And, and for me to wake up in the morning and not have, you know, a schedule and my little 
sticky notes of you know my to-do list and everything it it kind of ma is making me feel like i'm lost out at sea because i don't have a purpose and so that exercise that we did last time helped me to kind of identify that that's what i've been feeling the last few months and and then the big part was the forgiveness right like that hey it's okay to just float <laughs> or cruise for a while and not be you know creating something or putting together a deal or you know saving the world or <laughs> whatever like it's okay to just chill and and not beat myself up over it or or feel you know that i'm not um having a purpose not you know not not fulfilling something that i should be fulfilling so that's kind of what i got out of it and then in the first 19 pages that i read just before we hopped on to this call tonight a uh, big thing that stood out for me was you know he was um writing about the choice like we all have the choice and we can go through and say, oh, you know, it's this fault or that fault or this person or that person. Uh, but ultimately, it's even if we're dealt a crappy hand in childhood, as as we grow, we have that choice. And with that choice comes that responsibility to for that choice, right, to accept that what we choose is what we're going to manifest. So, yeah, if you want to kind of, like you said, you know, hop, hop in and invite and allow things to come to you that you desire, then um, you have to make that choice, right? If you make the choice of just blocking everything and coming up with reasons of why it's not going to happen or it can't happen or whatever, then it's not going to happen because that's my understanding anyways, is, you know, that what, what, what you focus on, right, is what you're going to attract and what you're going to manifest. Yeah. So ultimately it comes down to always, it's your choice in what you put out there, what you want and how you, how you react and perceive things to equals your outcome. Perfect. Good so, job. So I'm forgiving myself <laughs> for just cruising on the wave. <laughs> and I'm going to trust that what, what purpose is, is to come uh, will come. And I'll accept it and I invite it and I'll be open to it. And I'll do my best with it. Mm. Thank you, Daniel. That was great. Thank you very much. Jolanta, any shares, insights, implications in your life? Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I have been uh, kind of uh, working on handling the pendulums, um, especially, especially uh, when the, these are the pendulums that they are, uh, the decisions they have to be made, and uh, sometimes those decisions are difficult, conflicting, or very, very subjective and, you know, somehow, you know, I need to uh, transfer that. So I kind of learned to uh, trust my feelings on it. So rather than to be um, grabbed by the first, second or third or fourth uh, uh, bait from the, from the, <laughs> my pendulums, uh, I, I, you know, I kind of wait, wait for my feeling. And then ultimately I noticed that two things will happen. Uh, either nothing will happen. I really won't have something that I feel well about it. So I uh, keep my mouth shut, but then if I, see the solution that I feel well about it, then um, I'll just say it without worrying about the 
am I correct? Am I, how am I being going to be perceived? Is it good? Is it bad? So I'll just say it and uh, let the chips fall. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, up, that's application of it. Very good. Uh, I think Kerry shared earlier. I don't know if you have any other share now, Kerry. Very good. Uh, not really. No, I think um, you everything really. I was doing a, a little stop take the other day and relationships with my kids. And as Teresa knows, that some of those have been extremely challenging just going so smoothly and so beautifully. Um, I think I told you about going traveling with my daughter and tires blowing out and everything going wrong, but we still had a fantastic time. Business stuff is just moving almost effortlessly in the direction I want it to go. Uh, health is fantastic. I'm just I'm sleeping well. I'm exercising more than I've done in years. Like, most, you know, obviously there's the annoyance, but most things and even my, the few friends that I'm seeing because we're keeping our bubbles small, just really feeling blessed on so many levels right now. And I do think that trying to practice what's in this book is really you know, having a big impact on that. You're know, catching those pendulums, just shaking my head at this nonsense. Like, he's up the ante now. Now he parks in front of my house to annoy me. But what he doesn't realize is that that actually doesn't annoy me. It just makes me look at him and think, oh my God, you really are pathetic, which is kind of judgy. So probably not very helpful. But you know, it's just really, really feeling so blessed and thankful. And just even overall with the pandemic, how little impact it's really had on me compared to so many other people and not feeling guilty for feeling joyful and okay during this time because the world doesn't need more people being miserable and if I can go around expressing my good fortune and maybe being a positive role model for other people I think that's a lot better than perhaps feeling I should hide under a bushel just so that other people don't feel bad so I'm really feeling that I'm sure that this group and this book is helping so much thank you all so much and feeling right now really, really blessed. Yeah. Thank you. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, yeah, that was awesome. Thank you all. Love you all. Um, we're done for tonight. Just kidding. So, um, I see we're all on different stages of our reading. So, I'm going to get a few of the threads that you guys brought, a few of the basic concepts to bring us into chapter six. Okay, the first one is the basic concept of reality transurfing. Okay, there is this space of variations, which you could imagine it like an, it's the space of possibilities, the space where anything could happen. Everything that happened that will happen, that is happening, is already there. So it involves the realities that we see, but many other possibilities that could have happened, will happen, etc. Is that concept fairly clear? Because it's a core concept on this. It's almost, I was saying like the internet. Where is the internet? Well, I don't know, we think that it's a link of computers, or, but can you grab it in one place and say this is, no. The moment you, let's say, I'm gonna use Google as a reference. The moment you say Google, show me a picture of something, boom, then something, the picture of whatever something you ask for popped in the computer, right? You had asked for something else, pop, something else pops in your computer. So that's kind of a very simplistic way to put it. There is a space where almost anything is possible. Well, almost now everything is possible. Right? The question is how to bring it up to reality, how to make it happen. That's the art of reality transurfing. So how to move from this place to that place to all the different places on the internet, right? Where anything is possible. Now here comes the trick. We have the ability to Google almost anything, right? You can almost Google and whatever appears. The challenge is there are pressures, there are forces that want to attract, to keep our, distract us, keep our attention away, lower our power to create. That's one of the big concepts. What, is, what are these groups? Well, every time that at least two people 
sometimes one, if it's your boss, you consider your boss or your partner or your neighbor as, as, <laughs> as we were sharing, sometimes one person, but many times at least two or more, when they get together and think in some way, and they want you to do something in some way, that turns into a pendulum. A pendulum is a vibrational energy, a group of people that vibrate in certain frequency and will do their best to attract you and grab your attention. It could be, we've talked about this before, it could be a way of eating, a way of exercising, a way of living. This is the house you should have, the car you should have, the energy that you should have, the political group that you should have, the religion that you should have. They're all pendulums in their own way. Everything, Tony, is a pendulum in a way. It's almost impossible not to be in a pendulum. The art is to be aware that they exist and then cho to choose them wisely, whatever, whatever you go. We are a pendulum. We're here learning something and explaining something. You want to believe it or not, it's fine. You know, but the more we start swinging and yeah, this is working for me and this is working for me and this is, I learned this and then we become a pendulum in a way, you know? So there, are, in general as a rule, the pendulum wants to get your energy so you don't create your own things. The trick is here, as you were sharing, when I'm aware of my power, when I'm aware of what I wanna do and I use my energy towards that, I will make it happen because I have the power to bring it on. We'll, we'll learn more about that as we go on, on, this, on this quest, okay? But every other pendulum will want you to do it in their own way, or they want you to now be this political trade, or think or believe this way, or whatever it is, so you're distracted. And that's the challenge with pendulums in a very, very short way. You can spend a lot more time diving into the into the chapter, you could actually, you have access to the recordings when we talk about pendulum to dive deeper into this. But that's the beauty of pendulums, okay? There's another force that here that is very, very important, okay? Is the fact that we give, we assess everything in our lives. Whenever something happens, we give an opinion on what that is. And we load it with an evaluation. Oh, this person is amazing. Oh, this politician is amazing. No, this other one is amazing. Whatever it is, we put a lot of energy into that. We put a lot of importance into something. The more the, uh, the energy that we put on something that disturbs the, the actual isness of that, the more energy gets created, the more charge that gets created. And that tends to form something called a balancing force. So whenever you said, I hate beans, I hate beans, I don't want beans, everything is a bean, they give me upset stomach, I, they smell, they stink, they belong, whatever, guess what? You're gonna start seeing beans everywhere. That's what's called a balancing force. I evaluated beans as something terrible, I hate them, I cannot even smell them, see them, I cannot hold one more, and then you start seeing them everywhere because unknowingly to you, you're using all that energy to focus on something that you think you hate, right? And then all you're gonna do is seeing it, seeing it everywhere, because you're using your creative power in not the best way. That's a little bit, that's a little nugget on giving an evaluation, giving an importance, giving a lot of energy into an evaluation of something that starts, the more distorted there is, beings are terrible then the more energy that gets created, right? And then a balancing force, meaning an energy that will try to con you know, attack, diminish or something, what you're creating will come and start showing you more of that that you think you hate, okay? And sometimes we want something badly, okay? But we don't get it. And that's the other interesting channel, okay? The other interesting challenge. So that was a little bit of importance. And unfortunately, we reviewed this before, our brains are many times distracted by the pendulums. Sometimes we have all these impressions, all these ideas, all these, I'm now not even talking about guilt and beliefs and stuff, okay? That keeps us so distracted or so minimized. And again, the challenge with importance is that there are two types of importance, as you may remember from our discussion on that chapter. There's an internal importance and there's an external importance. The internal importance is the result of my evaluation. 
Oh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. I cannot do that. The moment I say that, my power to manifest increases tremendously. That's an internal importance challenge. And external importance is when something outside of me is so big, so unreachable, so difficult. How could I get it? That's only for those that bah, fill up the gland, fill up the, fill, in the, fill up the blank. That's a little bit of importance. This is just to get you excited to go back and review your chapters or just listen to the recording from the past few weeks. But those are very important concepts, okay? Because they're all built up on, we're building up what are the things that take our energy away? What are the things that distract us? What are the things that don't let us see our incredible power as you guys were sharing? Yes, we're incredible creatures. We just don't know how to use, first, have the freedom of choice. Yes, we can choose anything. Whenever you choose, whenever you find what is it that you want to do, your purpose, as you may call it, whenever you choose, this is what I want to do, you know? And once you know the skills and the tools, which is what we're going to review, you know, and then practice, you're going to have the ability to bring it on. Um, importance, pendulum, balancing forces, exit potential, purpose. So we learned that once we start recognizing, you know, the power of, of, of energies, you know, movement, the fact that in this great space that we call the space of variations, there are sectors. So there's a sector where there's sadness, there's a sector where there's poverty, there's a sector where there is wealth and happiness, etc. There's all kinds of things. Okay, for purposes of understanding, and because we're only 3D, I call it poverty, wealth, like if they were really separate. You know, obviously they were mingled, but to put it like this, depending on the energy of thought and emotion that we're putting at a given time, we have a tendency to move to that area and bring those things into reality. So one of the first concepts we start reviewing in this chapter six is the fact that whenever, listen to this, whenever the vibration of our thoughts and our emotions, you know, start to move in some wavelength, let's call it, let's say here the vibrations are slow versus here fast. Okay, so whenever I say thinking, ah, oh, poverty, challenges, bills, no jobs, depression, terrible things, the economy is bad, guess what's gonna happen? We're gonna start manifesting, bringing on things into re a reality that are the result of that, what we're, that we're thinking of. The same is true for any other area. What makes the difference? The awareness. The awareness of where am I believing that there is challenge and limitation? You know, you were saying, this COVID is not hitting me that bad. That's true. It's a whole bunch of people that are seeing the COVID as an incredible opportunity. I've heard people in my practice that says, oh, I've been trapped. I haven't been able to do anything. I'm so depressed, just whatever. This was the same person that told me a few months before that they had no time to do anything. Now they were given the opportunity to read, clean, fix, change, you know, reassess, work on their purpose, whatever, and they didn't do it all the time. They had all the time to reassess, change, you know, all these things. They didn't do it. Was it really, is it really the COVID? It's really, it's, it's another discussion. But remember, whatever we think of and feel in alignment, we will create. The challenges, as we've reviewed before, negative emotions are way more powerful on us because we're not aware of them. And that's why we tend to bring all the, what we call negative things, the challenging things. It scares us more, you know, when we know, we're, we're not aware of our power and we start giving into the negative, into the guilt, into the all the, anything that you will call like a negative or weakening emotion, okay? When unconsciously we start giving it food, we start sparkling that fire, guess what happened? We're gonna move into that sector with those, where we see more of those things. So one of the reminders here is, hmm, what am I thinking? What emotion I'm letting flow here into my life? Where do I choose to, you know, 
to just react in a different way to what's happening on purpose. That's one of the big calls, remember, through the chapters. How could I train myself to look at the positive on any situation that arises as negative as it may appear and present to us? Very, very important concept. And practice, not just a concept. This is not about concept, guys. You get the concept, but then you said practice. Oh, something terrible happened today. How do I look at the positive in this? What did I learn at least on that situation where I lost money when something happened? Somebody died. Oh, that's dramatic. It hurt tremendously, right? Well, do I look at the loss or do I look at all the incredible times and years and experiences that I had with this person? What did I learn? Would this person like me to be all sad and depressed because they left? Or would they like me to celebrate their lives and what they left here? And what, you know? So it's all in our ability to decide what we want to do. So that's the first thing, important concept. This chapter, fo starts focusing on something we're going to start diving deeper and deeper. The difference between the mind, the conscious mind, and the subconscious. The subconscious, we're calling it soul or the heart. And the interesting thing here is, you know, in this great space of variations, there are things that we can see that we call reality. But there, but there is the other oh, many, many things that we haven't even manifested. One of the things that this reminds us, this concept reminds us, is that our mind can only operate with the things that is hardly seen or learned. The mind by itself does not have the ability to create anything new. Listen to this. This is a little tricky. Doesn't mean that the mind is not powerful. I'm, I have never said that. But if all you know is English, I'm sorry, you won't be able to speak Chinese anytime soon. You have to go and learn it, okay? If, and you can only create from, you can create incredible poems and things like that in English, not in another language, unless you go and learn that as well. We're limited by what our mind can do. In the other hand, the, the soul, the heart, we're gonna use that interchangeably, has the ability to see all these, all these spaces of possibilities of the things that are not created that could happen. And he knows, he feels, he doesn't speak though. And that's the incredible challenge. It's a very interesting distinction. So as much as we wanna say with the mind you can create, no. Now here comes the interesting thing. So we start introducing us to this concept. The, the soul, the heart can see all these things. Let's focus on art. There's, there's this artist, this great guy that's learned everything to do with color and, and he could mix them and, and he knows how to move the brush and do kind of incredible things. But you will always know they're like, ah, they try things, they're, they're looking for something else. They're looking for something else that they haven't been able to come up with despite all the incredible skills that they've had, years of experience. It's only the moment, only the moment where they quiet the mind and somehow they listen to, we tend to put the heart here, right? They listen to the heart with the soul. And this soul is connected, you know, is connected to the space of incredible things. It's the moment where the soul, the heart senses this incredible beauty, bam, and the mind is listening to the heart. Somehow the heart behaves like a translator. He brings that, let's call it beauty in terms of art, you know, so the mind can get a glimpse of what is there. And that's how then, whoa, the artist get inspired and comes up with this incredible, beautiful thing that was never seen. That's true for music. And that's true for scientific discoveries. We've all known the stories of the great guys, like Tesla, I, I was reading his book, you know, of his biography. The guy worked like crazy, he was a master. He was looking for this way to optimize energy, but he couldn't, he was thinking, he was going through that. Same thing with Einstein, you've heard his story. The guy was studying, they knew the numbers, they knew everything. 
but it's only those moments where suddenly they quiet their mind, even though their mind was inquiring. But listen to the power. Mind needs to be prepared. Mind needs to ask a question, a powerful question. Tesla was saying, hmm, how do I get this thing, you know? And the story with Tesla says that he was in a park walking and he was actually at some moment just going over, over a poem that he loved. He was relaxed. He was in a moment of, I will call it, I'm, I'm going to put it like this, a point where he was in ecstasy reviewing a poem that he loved. And at that moment, he, I'm going to speculate this, he quieted his mind to the point that through the beauty that he was expressing in his poetry, he opened up to the knowledge that this the soul, his heart, you know, put in front of him on how to create these incredible discoveries that led to what we know from him. Something similar, depending on how explanation you want to put it, it really doesn't matter, okay? It was an aha moment. He didn't just think about it and with all his smartness came out and created this thing. He saw at a certain moment, he got a glimpse of that incredible thing and then he drew it and came up with it. It's all written, that's how it happened. You know, it was true for Edison, he will go with this inquisitive mind, you know? Some people will tell you, is that moment where you're awake and you're going to sleep, that moment, okay? Where if you ask a question and at the moment where you go to sleep, you remember the story he used to hold, I think a stone in a, in a he used to hold, a, this is what it is, a spoon. And he will go and sit in his thinking chair, have a question in his mind, start meditating or resting. And the moment he knew he fall asleep, he loses the tone on his hand the, the spoon drops, that's the moment where he got a glimpse of, bam, the answer to his questions. Mm. He knew he was looking for that second or whatever you want to call it. This is me trying to bring it a point, make a story of it. Okay. That moment of, wow, where he could see where he was open to his heart telling him, hello, here's being all the time. You has, haven't seen it because you didn't have the ability to see it. His thought, his brain, even as smart as he was, didn't have the ability to see what has been there all along as a possibility. And that's how great discoveries, scientific discoveries have come. And whenever you look at any, sci any, any great scientists that come out, and Einstein will tell you, it was all those aha moments, all these incredible things that suddenly brought to light something that it wasn't known at that moment. So that's the first few paragraphs on this chapter six. It's quite interesting and plays as a story, but it's beautiful because it reminds us just by our mind alone, we cannot, we, we, we will come up with incredible thought processes, okay, but not new beautiful things necessarily. Mm -hmm. Not to minimize the power of the brain, but just to bring up that important concept, okay? So the concept is there is truth in that space of variations of the known that is recognized easily by the heart or soul Okay, the mind at some moment gets exposed to that and brings, translates it, and then we call that knowledge. This is knowledge, it's new things to learn. So knowledge is an interpretation of that experience, that truth. So that's what races, brings the, there's a big, big, more, many paragraphs on, on clairvoyance, and the ability to see things in the future. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not that good, but it's premonitions, intuitions, prophecies, inventions. It's all link to that kind of story that I told you. And that's what they call the knowledge from out of nowhere. Well, now we know where it is. It's been there all along, we just cannot see it. If we're only focused on the only way to solve the problem, Mr. Lanto was saying, the only way to solve this problem like this, from my head to thinking and looking at all the variables and making a decision. So the conscious mind is the reason the heart knows. That's the need to explain. And here comes something. There's a concept throughout this book called the rustle of the morning stars. He keeps saying, listen to the rustle of the morning stars. It knows, it will tell you, will guide you. What is that? Your heart speaking, your soul speaking. When we quiet this fellow and we listen to this one, he will tell us, he will guide us. And if you're trained and prepared and you have your right questions in whatever your field is, 
it will give you, it will bring that incredible ability to bring a discovery, an intuition, something amazing, okay? So that's uh, kind of the interesting things. Why? Because the mind is used to labeling things. I think there's 12 of us right now. I think there's color. I think there's this. I label things. The heart doesn't give color. There's no limits for the mind, for the soul, sorry. There's no boundaries. There's nothing. It's just, it's, there it is. That's the beautiful thing in here, right? So he reminds me. He reminds us, do not think so much. Feel and listen to your intuition. Stop the train of thought and contemplate the emptiness. Some people ask, but how do we do that? It's, we're so not, I mean, I have so many things in my head. There's so many things to do. There's the news, there's this, this is happening. This is the other thing, my, my relative, nobody let me, but I, I don't have a minute. You know, there's a practice. We all know multiple ways of, quote, meditating, breathing. Breathing is one of the most simple yet challenging things to do. Breathe, deep breath, slow it as much as possible. Whenever you focus on just your breath in and out, you quiet the noise of the mind. And the more you do it, the better you become a quieting, we become a quieting our mind. So then we can connect with the one that knows. And that leads us to the next very interesting concept, which is the fact that, that the, the, the soul, the soul is uh, either comfortable or uncomfortable. The way the mind reads that is, I feel good or I don't feel good. So it's like, how do you feel? I'm, I'm good, I'm, or I'm not good, you know. When you're calm and relaxed and happy, as Kerry was saying, everything is good, it's mellow. You know you're, 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 you're really, really, you know, in, 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 in peace, in some type of harming, some type of balance, things are good, you know? The moment you know you're doing something that is not right, or you're not doing something that you should be doing, that's when your soul is telling you, hello, there's something to do. That's where you start wondering, what's my purpose? I know I should be doing something because I wouldn't be worrying about it. Remember, you wouldn't be worrying about it if there wasn't something that is telling you, hello, you may be not doing something. It happens to me. It happens to me a lot. You know, you have all these incredible skills. Oh, shouldn't you be using them for the betterment of other people? And that's the call here for us. Remember, each of us is a leader in our worlds. It could be a leader to our family, a leader to our community of whatever it is that you are in. And that's the call here for the, the, the warrior sage path, the dojo. To remind us all that we're powerful and they have an incredible ability to help others around us, you know, do their, bring their incredibleness and to let it manifest, okay? One at a time, if that's what it takes. One at a time. Some, one of you mentioned it. Yeah, if one less is suffering in all this mess, that brings the resonance that will make things better. And I imagine if everybody could embody that, that they can have that ability. Now there's two of us and three of us. That's a herd process. You heard the herd immunity? Well, there's a herd improvement on this. If all of us here start vibrating in that, wow, I really have that ability to you know, I have the power to start by start thinking, by choosing to emanate positive energy, seeing the positive on everything. Okay, that's challenging as it happens. You know, I start vibrating in a frequency that impacts those around me even without them knowing. That is very powerful, even if we don't do anything else. So the art is to quiet the mind to listen. Now, how do we use this knowledge? I know the practice. Before making a decision, before making a decision, ask the question. Mm, I'm gonna remember, oh, remember maybe combined. I love this. I love this idea of electrical cars, right? So some time ago, I thought about, I was looking for a car that I could afford. That's still the big thing then. So they have this little beam. I love beamers. They have this i3, okay? This i3, great electrical car. It wasn't that expensive at that moment, okay? And I was, in, my mind was saying electrical, you know, I can afford it, all these things. And I remember the moment that was gonna sign for that lease, Arr, feeling like, you shouldn't. And I didn't listen to it because I was, I didn't, I'm saying I didn't. 
you know? And it was so interesting because remember the concept here is my soul knew what was going to happen through on that path of things. Wow. You know, I was so excited about an electrical car and this, and I can afford it and this, all the things. Little I knew that I needed a plug, to, you know, and every night. So you should see me for the next two, three years of my lease, you know, getting the darn wire and connecting it to an outside plug in my building, which I, yeah, I didn't have, they don't have a special post to, in the building to plug an electrical card where this was way before everybody, you know, started having those special places to, to plug their car. So it was quite an interesting adventure. So why am I saying this? Show from saying silly, I didn't listen to it before, right? It's because the lesson here is our soul, our heart knows. It already knows what we're heading into or what we could head into. So the trick is to listen to it. So before you make a decision, say, oh, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to do this. You know, feel into how, how what, your, what your heart, what your soul is telling you. Okay? If, if, it's, uh, if, it's, if, it's, if it's a comfortable feeling, if there's peace, if there's harmony in it, then it's a goal. If you have to start convincing yourself well, this electrical, well, you can afford it. Yeah, I, I should ask my friend, the neighbor that will let me plug in the car. So it will be fine, right? Well, it's a good man or a good woman. You know, it's better if somebody that I know that somebody, you know, so complicated. People are so complicated. Maybe, have, maybe commit to this person, you know. Whatever it is, whenever you're convincing your mind, you know, to go for that decision, you know, it's a no if it's not here. You follow me on that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a powerful, thank you. So this is a powerful point, okay? This is a powerful thing to know, okay? And then somewhere along the chapter, he talks about the signs, the omens, the things that you're willing to see, okay? Sometimes phrases that are said randomly that, you, that we hear randomly, the little signs that you see like on the, it says FedEx, you know, that's the arrow that tells you go that way all the time if you're willing to see it. The little things that warn you, keep warning you, hello, pay attention. If you go the other way, you're going to be in trouble. You know, those are the things. It's again, the, the whole chapter is about, and this is what I've been telling you today, right? Become aware of your power. Become aware that there are forces that want to distract you. Last week, two weeks ago, we talked about induced transition, right? We talked about how the news you know, start at one o'clock. At six, we'll be showing you the drama that happened at this time. You know, at two or three o'clock, they tell you, now we have more details about what happened with the trauma. They're inducing, they're grabbing our attention and taking that energy away from us. So if we're aware of ourselves, our incredible power. If we're aware of the fact that our pendulums, there are groups of energy, thoughts and sources that want to distract us from. If we're aware that some of our emotions don't serve as well and will push us into sectors where we're going to see more of that stuff, then we're going to be able to get into a space that Carrie was sharing with us. You know what? I've been aware of stuff. And boy, if this is good and this is good and this is good and this is good. Wow. And you know, this guy is kind of annoying. It's not perfect, you know. But I'm even learning how to deal with that. So eventually, you know, the best will happen out of this situation. That's the art in here. That's the message. Listen to the one that knows, okay? Bring, I, I call it, bring smart questions in your life. So your heart will serve as a translator, like the Google engine, you know, that will bring that knowledge to you so you can recognize it and apply it and bring the incredible discoveries or decisions, as Yolanda was, was asking, to your life. So this is very powerful uh, concept in here. Rather than being the needy, the, um, what were they, this little chapter on a little paragraph, the needy, the indignant, or the uh, warrior, the fighter. There's some people that are, don't know their power. They keep saying negative things. They keep saying, this politician is terrible, or this other one is terrible. It doesn't really matter. This God is that. This, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you're like, 
I have no power. It's whatever God says or whatever he brings to me. Then that's it. That's what you have. If you're not aware of that, then you don't have any ability to even ask him for anything, you know? If you're the warrior, if you're the time all the time fighting, oh, I'm going to fight for this, or for this, or for that, you don't have any energy to create, to manifest, to bring into reality what you want. And the indignant is doing the same thing. The indignant, by definition, is, is all the time like, oh, that's not good enough for me. They should have given me this. I'm entitled to more and more and more. But at that energy, remember, is energy that is not in balance. So we'll bring some other energies that are going to push this person into a space where it's going to get more and more of that that he or she dislikes. Pretty straightforward, right? It kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Next little concept. Yes, there's a big space where everything that could happen, happen or is happening is there. Yes, it's all there to be manifest to manifest at any given time if we knew how to anything if we had that power anything that we want will appear okay if we didn't have all these uh internal inferences that tell us me creating a million dollars right now popping in front of me nah you know but remember it's possible just go and buy a lot of you might be surprised that's all it takes in the right setting and the right all that other stuff that we're learning, right? Not if you said, I need the million dollars because I need the million dollars because I'm gonna buy this lot of things. Because that already is triggering emotions, right? That are not gonna are gonna decrease the chances of the million of you hitting the big pot, right? But what I'm saying is we do have that incredible ability to create anything. Now, in this space, there's a rule. It's a little rule. It's called, it's organized. Or it's a concept, I should say. The spaces, the sectors are organized in a cause and effect way. So everything that we do think has an effect. And that's an important concept to understand. Because as we move along, as we do things, as we think things, something happens. It's like, a, oh, this happens. And that starts creating a stream, a path. So a person, like let's say Carrie, who's like, oh my goodness, things are good in the challenging times, it's still looking at good things. Then you start going with the flow. And look, something bad happens. So as you're aware of your power and you're in the river, rather than fighting, I don't wanna go to that place, I don't want to, you know, you're in the flow, you're going in the river. What you do is you're alert to what's happening and you see, oh, there's a rock, there's something. So let me turn. So I go through that path. Every time that we think or do something, okay, we move along in some direction. So there's a cause and effect, okay? The art is to be aware of that, you know? The art is to listen to a heart. The art is to remember the most problems, this is from previous chapters, but we'll review it right now. Most problems are the result of our brain. It's not our heart. The heart is the, 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 the isness of the perfection of everything. We're the ones that have those beliefs that we can't, that is too difficult, that ugh, the friend is, this is the person that's thinking this, and if I do this, he's gonna, he's gonna think this, and if I do this, then the other person, if I don't do this to him or to her, then she's gonna do this. If, you know, if I go to work, if I don't take the job, and what if I quit my job? This is the only one that I had, and there's no other one, and you know, COVID is terrible, and if this politician wins, who's creating all those problems? This fellow, right? The other one knows. The mind creates problems. We review on the previous weeks that when we recognize importance and we drop the importance on our train of thought on the way we think, and we're aware of our emotions, you know, that trigger that, then we recognize that the problems disappear. The moment we can drop importance, problems disappear, and then we can move and go with the flow, which is one of the concepts here. How to go with the flow in the river that we want to be. And if it gets stormy and challenging under rocks, then you go 
one is that kayaking, you know, if you go, sometimes you have to turn, you have to go, you have to hold tight. Sometimes you can enjoy and celebrate. Yeah, 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 this is easy, this is cool, you know? So is that ability to move through life through the challenges that are, arise in that area? So that's what the concept of cause and effect, the brain is creating challenges. So if we recognize that and we start dropping that grip, we like to control everything. I like it like this and like this because in that way I know what's gonna happen, right? But one of the invitations for in this chapter is to let it be. Jolanda was sharing that. I'm breathing into this. Well, let me see what happens. Be careful. It doesn't mean being, um, how you call it? Being careless. No, 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 no. Never, ever be careless. Be impeccable in what you do. But listen to this concept that we reviewed before. Care deeply without worrying. Care deeply without worrying. Whenever I said, don't listen to my, don't think too much, I didn't say, don't think at all. Ever be careful. Evaluate your options. Hello, of course. But there's a moment where you have to kind of make a decision. Well, use the most powerful, you know, guidance there. The one that knows what's going to happen on each path. Use it wisely. He invites us to ask a good decision, a decision that will be easier, yes or a no, will be easier than a complicated thing. Because if it's complicated and there are many variables, then you might not get the right answer immediately. Just take it a step at a time. Sometimes focusing on the steps to achieve A, let's say a goal or the solution to A, is better than only focusing on the ultimate goal, right? So whatever it is that you have to achieve, you know, what if we start with the first step? Okay, so then you can ask a very straightforward question. Do I do this or this? And your heart will guide you. Instead of saying, do I, you know, so do I want to be a doctor? Hmm, well, well, let's wait. Let's start with something easier. Should I get into the health field or something else? I like health or I like this? Well, let me, let's decide. Start testing the waters. Heart, let me, you know, let's pay attention to my heart. Yeah. I'm going to go into this one. And then you continue the path. You know, always set up a direction. Always be impeccable with what you do. Okay. But care without worrying. The worrying, the difference between caring and worrying is all that added energy about whatever it is that we do. So those are some of the concepts that we review here. The flow of alternatives. Okay, listening to our heart, being alert to the guiding signs. He talks about omens. He talks about, you know, listening to our gut feeling, right? Remember, if you have to convince yourself for something, you're trying too hard. Remember, that's a no. When he said yes, you just feel it. Yes, I me mean, go for it. Otherwise, it's most likely a no. And be alert to that. Now, is it true, he tells us, is it true that there are situations where you just can't because you're trapped in a place? Well, listen to that and be aware of what's happening. Be aware that sometimes you may follow a pendulum that it's better, it's less evil than others at a given time. But always be aware of why you're making that decision and if it's something that you should follow or not, or you should just definitely not agree with that. I think I'm blessing you with a lot of stuff. I, uh, we have about nine minutes. I'd rather hear your reflections, your questions, your shares on, uh, on what we just talked about. You know, what would be, what would be a take? What, what, what resonates with you? That'll be important. That'll be a practice from all the things that we, that we did. Just, uh, just unmute yourself and bring it on. Yes, Tony. One thing I, I was thinking about is that we create, we create pendulums that are empowering the world rather than disempowering. So many of the current pendulums are so disempowering. I think our, one of our goals in this, this group is to 
three pendulums that are empowering. They're all in a way, remember right now you're here instead of probably with your family or doing something else. We're stealing, we as a group, we're stealing your energy for, 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 for some time. Remember, that's, that's true, right? You're here, you're giving the energy to this place. Hopefully, hopefully it was your, as a pendulum, but hopefully it was your choice to say, I want to go and learn something. This will be good for me. So I choose to. The trick in life with the pendulums is to choose which ones you align with. Is this pendulum an alignment with what I want to achieve? Is this, is this um, course in college or in an, uh, whatever institution going to help me move along? Because remember, that course is taking your energy. It's distracting you from other aspects of your world, other areas where you could be right now sleeping, uh, working out, doing all this stuff that potentially could be more important to you than just listening to uh, creating life and creating my life and manifesting you know, with ease. Wow, who cares about that? I'm rather do my push-ups. You know? So remember, it's a matter of being aware and choosing the pendulums. Yes, they're all by definition getting your energy. Anything is getting your energy. Okay? But the art is to say, mm, yeah, I'll go for this one on purpose because it's aligned with what I want to create, with what I want to do. Does that help? Yeah, it's, it's what's going to pull my attention. Oh. Thank you. Uh, Carrie, it sounded like you were going to share some. I put it in the chat. I loved what you said about the heart translating for the mind. I loved that. That's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Today, actually, when I was working out with my trainer, he has a different worldview to mine. He tends to be a little bit more, what I would call pessimistic. Pessimists usually call realistic. And it's really fun as I'm working with him to expose him to more and more of my ideas and ways of doing things. And today he actually said, oh, you're the opposite to me. But I can feel that just little nuggets of different things I'm sure are seeping in. So while he's working on my body, I'm working on his heart probably. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And remember, you remind me, Terry, Something for Tony. He had a question about pendulums. The pendulums have the right to exist. The moment you said, oh, how come this person says this? You know, er, what a, no, no, no. It says, he has the right to say whatever he wants to say. Whew. You diffuse that energy. You don't give your energy. Remember, pendulums get our energy, no matter if we agree or disagree with them. Be careful. Alert, alert, alert. Okay. It's about taking our energy. I believe some of our politicians are experts at doing that. They say the most incredible, stupid things with the sole purpose of irritating us, okay? And we think that we're doing such a great thing by being irritated by it. And without knowing it, we're just falling in the trap. Being manipulated. Remember that some partners say things sometimes to us to hurt us. And we don't agree. The moment we're like, ah! our energy is just being wasted on something that is not worth it. Well, if you somehow, we could somehow say, like you were saying with your, with your instructor, he says the silliest thing in your, in your understanding. And you said, you know what? That's so interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And you truly let it go. Remember, we're talking about how to deal with pendulums. It's not to fight them and ignore them like they're not there. It's just to let it flow through. And somewhere in this place, in this chapter, it reminds us the same thing. You know, don't hold to it. Just let it flow. They have the right to exist. You know, the controversy and all the stuff is there for some to take. If they want to, give them their energy, Tony. Yeah. You know, if you want to just fight because you, you're, you know, you argue and all the stuff, then play with it. Anyway, one last share. One last, yes. Yeah. One last share before Cindy give us some, some takes. Anything else? Anybody else has any uh, thing that resonated with you guys? Any practice? Good. Well, I'm glad. Just remember, practice this week, quieting your minds in whatever way you know. Listen to your heart, especially when you're going to make decisions. Okay, powerful decisions. And remember, all the time we're making decisions, right? What am I focusing on? That's one decision that's happening all the time. Consciously or unconsciously, that's your choice. Second, what does it mean to me? What I'm focusing on, what does it mean to me? That's a second decision. Are you aware of that? And three, what am I going to do about it? 
So even if you think, oh, I'm not, I don't have any decisions to make, I'm all good. Well, Dad, you made a decision. Just there. So be aware, quiet your mind, listen to your heart. You know, remember to stay on the positive. Be alert to your world. The world is continuously guiding you. It's telling you what direction to go if you're alert to it. Those are the guiding signs that he talks about in this chapter, okay? So be aware of those things. Be aware to your intuition, the gut feeling, that thing that we all have there. That's not just to give you indigestion, you know? It turns into indigestion from not listening to it. But it's being there to tell you that, hello, you're not listening. Remember, we know it even from science, you know? The nervous system on the gut is even more powerful than the one here. You've heard that now more and more. Science has told us that. And the bugs in there are very more powerful than, 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 than anything else. Anyway, Cindy, take it from, from us. What, what should we know for our next gathering and what's coming? Okay. Thank you so much for that awesome review of not only chapter six, but the book basically from the, from the beginning. That's beautiful. So first things first, I want to take a picture of us. So if everyone can look at the camera, if that's okay with you guys. I just want to take a picture because then maybe next week I can post it on the, on the Warrior Sage page, if you don't mind. So you can wave if you want. I'm just going to take a quick picture. Hi. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Actually, that'll be a great thing. If you could, guys, if there's something that you get from this, uh, you know, interactions, post it. Post them on the website. So all this was, oh, really? That's happening? Or you learned that? I think that'll be really good to encourage other people to yes. attend this. Okay? So yes. that, there's more power on anything that you could say than any, any of the stuff that we put there. Because people are like, ah, another, another invitation. Oh, how annoying. But if you guys said, you know what, I just learned this, I, or I, I'm listening now to my heart, or I'm dropping importance, or whatever it is, you know, that, is, that has more power into, into all this stuff and maybe invites all the people that feel, remember, we resonate with things that come from the heart, right? More than a place of, come on, come here, listen, listen stuff. It like, sounds like somebody announcing stuff. So we'll really appreciate if you could come from your heart and post something, you know, that resonated with you and, you know, not even to invite them, just to say, hey, you know, I, I learned this, I, I'm doing this, this, is, this was fun, or if you hate it too, that's fine, you have the right to say it. Anyway, Thank you. Guys. So our next meeting is October 22nd, so two weeks from today, and we're going to be reading Chapter 7, Intention. It's a very hearty chapter to say the least. It's, it's an amazing chapter. So please, if you would, take a look at it, really dive into it. Not just the summary, but uh, just, just dive away into intention. It's very, very important. Go ahead. It's Mark. about 50 pages, so it's a lot to read. Don't wait for the last minute, especially for those in page 17. You know, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Drop importance. But the reason this is so crucial is because it's moving from desire most of us have a wish. Oh, I wish this, I wish that, I desire this. Well, the power of intention in the reality transurfing world, it's, it's amazing. It's gonna be the core of manifestation. So take your time to dive into it, digest it, bring questions, anything that comes to your mind, okay? Yes, go ahead. Core of manifestation, perfect. So a couple other little things. October 17th, coming up uh, next Saturday, a week from Saturday, is the activation relation, the relationship activation. And if you can be a part of that, that's great. So you can do the activations anytime, any day, anywhere you'd like by just going to warriorsage.com. It's just really easy, like a, a click and it's all done for you. If you have no idea what, what I'm talking about, there are three activations that are already done on the warriorsage.com page, relationship, power, and abundance. But the next one we're, we're up with is the uh, October 17th relationship. So have a look at that and just get some friends, get some family members, 
join, join, you know, you can do it on Zoom. It's really cool. So if you have any questions, just let us know. And uh, super, super simple. So imagine that you get a few friends, your partner or anybody else, and you want to dive deep into the power of relationships. There's a whole, it's like six to eight hours, okay, of activities that are already pre-recorded with some teachings with Satchin, okay, and guided exercises where, where you will, that's why they call activation, you will activate, okay, the power of relationship in this case, okay, dive deep into what a relationship, the power of, of, of that in your lives. It's all there, it's for free, all you, all you need to do if you choose to is invited and at least one more person say, hey, let's do this together. Right? We have the Saturday. And the Cindy was saying you could do this anytime. It's all pre-recorded. So you can just log in, download it, and play it. It's that straightforward. They get somebody else. You don't need to say anything else, but just let it run. And then the exercises, follow, follow along and, and do it. It's really quite interesting. And, uh, and, and then you learn a way to bring incredible value to your community, to the people you live with. Okay? The link is in the chat for the the activations. Go ahead and, and yes. go into that link and download yeah. those. Yeah. And the relationship out. activation is is not primary relationship. It's all relationships. Right. Thank you for that, Teresa. Beautiful. And along those same lines, get together with some mem family members or friends and do some dyads. You know, there we every time we put the notes up, we'll put some dyad examples that you can use just go into a just like we did today one-on-one -on -one and just ask the question and then or give the instruction the person answers great way to deepen your communication with someone that you care about and uh, i highly highly recommend it so try that out look in the notes that that i'll post in a couple days and uh Take a look at some of the examples and just anybody, anybody that you have in your, in your world, say, hey, you know, you want to want to try a great way to really deepen our communication. It's just the power of two. It's so awesome. So try that out. And then I think that, that was about all I had. Next meeting, October 22nd, we'll see you in two weeks. And hopefully you'll all be able to have at least taken a look at that chapter. I hope you dive into it because it's, it's fabulous intention. Yeah. Any questions, any thoughts, any closing comments? Okay. I know we kept you a few minutes over, but thank you all for being here. So, so great to be with you tonight. Say Listen good to night. your hearts. Listen to your heart. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Good night for Bye. now. Bye-bye. Good night, all. Good night.